The Green Mountain State has become home to many people forced to escape Somalia when the government there was toppled by armed opposition groups in 1991. The crisis forced a mass exodus of people who often had to leave their homes without their belongings, hoping to find a safe place beyond Somalia's borders. The fighting left behind a generation of refugees, including the man you are about to hear from, 57-year-old Abdehamid Muhammad, who now lives in Burlington. He recently visited the Vermont Public Studios with interpreter Mohammed Abdullahi, himself a Somali refugee who learned to speak English in a Kenyan refugee camp. Abdi Hamid's story is one of three collected in a book published this fall called Deep North. The stories were collected by Vermont author Brad Kessler, who also published a novel in 2021 based on what he learned from speaking with a Somali asylum seeker. But what the people in Deep North went through to get to Vermont tells a tale as harrowing as any work of fiction. Before he became a refugee, Abda Hamid says he guided his family's herd of camels from village to village, selling the animals valuable milk. It was a nomadic existence in a land where Abda Hamid saw more animals than people each day. <laughs> So it's a very beautiful land where you don't see any other stuff than animals. This, the way he stated, you hear him saying uh, elephant, I did hear giraffe, that. camel, they're all together there. Buffalo. Buffaloes. Oh. So all these, this place is very quiet outside any, it's not close to any road where a car or anything goes. No sound than the only sound we hear is the animals' sound. But the war soon put an end to that way of life. When the soldiers came, um, did you lose any family? Marka wahalagadilimijra or olke kagadent. How was your end? Yes. Yes. Ha abo yo yo. Marka yalla dilu kasu ha kafkalad kumalagadilu kuda. My mom and my dad. My dad and brother. One brother. I I lost those three people. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I have some injury here, a little injury in my neck. What was that from? What happened? That was that same time they were killed. You know. What happened to Amartamo? It was a knife. Abdi Hamid fled with the surviving members of his family and some others he met along the way, heading west toward Kenya. But getting there involved making a terrifying choice, roam through the brush country and risk being attacked by animals or venture into a town or village where encountering another human could also prove fatal. The problem is you don't know who you're going to trust. If someone comes to you, you're going to say, oh, this is the person who's going to kill you. So you don't know who you can ask question or who you can run to. So it's kind of, a, at this time, it's like, you better go to a bush where there's no one and you can run out of there. It's very difficult even to ask someone where to go. You will say, oh, is he gonna, this is the guy who's going to kill you? This is a bad, bad guy? You don't know. In Deep North, Abda Hamid says of his choice, between the men and the lions, we chose the lions. It turned out to be the right decision. Abdi Hamid estimates it took about a month for him, his brother, and his brother's family to make it to a huge outdoor refugee camp in the western part of Kenya called Kakuma. How long did you have to wait in the refugee camp before you came to Vermont? About 20 years. 20 years? So, at that place, in the refugee camp, I can't say it's still safe. There was violence in the camp, and Abda Hamid says his brother was shot several times, requiring surgery. He describes the camp as an open-air prison that he wasn't allowed to leave during the 20 years he lived there. His asylum application was eventually processed, and he came to Vermont in 2009. I asked him if there are difficulties living here, like adjusting to a much colder climate, not having a full grasp of English, or having to pay rent, which he never had to do before in Somalia. Wow. <laughs> Compared to what I come across and what I experience, this is nothing. Abdi Hamid says his neighbors in Burlington have been kind to him, and that kindness extends beyond the state's borders. 
dat ka vermont ja vermont wax wada dhashay waxaan for example ka soo qaadaya sorry rally hada waxaan ka soo qaadaya new york airport ka inaan imaaday vermont weeye u iso dhawaatay waxay dhaaday you live in vermont yes and i wan farxay walaashay sidii aniga walaashay weeye walaashay maxaa yeelay abi hooyo ina no wada dhaleen bay hayde so he's given you a, a, an example he went back to kenya and then he went back to jfk airport and his flight left before he got there and i was worried about a little bit because i didn't know how to go around and get next flight and now they told me that your flight will be next long time and when i came from kenya i never brought with me anything so i was sitting there so worried about and this lady nancy come to me and she asked me where are you going and she said i'm going to vermont she was from vermont so once she said i'm vermont it's like i got my sister my sister <laughs> so she ran around she you know she feed me now i i worry less and she take taking care of me she was very kind she kind of like now i i i don't even worry about flight anymore and that's the example i'm giving you that's how they are kind even out of vermont if they see yeah, you yeah they know what so i cried really joy crying yeah, so that is what i can tell you vermont even out of the town out of the state th- that's how they even taking care for me so that's why i'm i'm saying vermont is kind of the best home that i have Abdul Hamid regrets that he has since lost track of Nancy and he would love to thank her again for the kindness she showed him. So, Nancy, if you happen to be listening, please get in touch and we'll help you to meet up again. Now well settled in Burlington, Abdul Hamid takes daily strolls to replace the walking he did with his camels back in Somalia. And he enjoys voting in local elections, something he never did before in his homeland. He also says he has no intention of leaving. He had a chance in 2015 when his surviving brother, wife, and children decided to move from Vermont to Minnesota. They asked him to join them, but he declined, he says, for a simple reason. I I love Vermont. Thank you. That was Abd Hamid Muhammad, who lives in Burlington, and interpreter Muhammad Abdullahi, who lives in Essex. Abd Hamid's story is one of 3 collected in a book called Deep North by Brad Kessler. For Vermont Public, I'm Mitch Wertlieb.